Can you see me? Can you see me? Is it amazing? So we can get this started. Um, my name is Allison Kevin. I am the co-founder of Art of Hip Hop.
Oh, together. together. <laughs> Get a margarita. Well deserved. Yes. Well deserved. Well deserved. It's your turn. Oh, yes.
Thank you. This is crazy. Yeah. Yes. Round of applause, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. What an honor. This is a proclamation is sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Four. Two more. Three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I need wait, a boomerang. Wait, wait, wait. Can we Let do a boomerang? Let the cell phones have a chance. Cell phones Lili. over here. Cell phones over here. Go. Lily, can you do a boomerang? Lolo? Can you do a boomerang, please? Cell phones, over, cell phones over there. Look over there, everyone. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Where? Cell phones over there. Look towards okay. Alan. Oh, We're going to go around the room. Oh, sorry. Okay. Got it? But, okay, cell phones in the back over here. Do you, do you mind taking a boomerang? Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. This no. last one. Last one, I promise. Ready? I promise. Okay. So sorry. Boomerang. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. One, right, two, three. Shake, 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 <laughs> shake, 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 shake. So sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it was great. Was Thank great. you. Bravo, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Show me a hug or something. Thank you. We just Thank need to you. run around the world. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Should I break it? I'm breaking our back. Thank you from them while you're wow. in the panel. Thank, Thank you. you. That was amazing. Oh. I cannot thank you enough, Maria Laura, for spending your Friday evening doing this and honoring the women of our airways. We are so grateful. I know some people are just oh. arriving. There are plenty of seats here in the front if you guys want to slide in. I know Lucy's sister was just here and then I lost her. She's right over there. Oh, she's over there. Okay, Wait. perfect. Okay, you just found the spot. Um, so when I came sure. up with, first of all, I just want to end the interest of full disclosure. I was Lucy Luke Lopez's intern in college, so I've been following her career. I was actually on Stitches the show today. I'm just getting to know Super Cindy, and you know, I've followed you my whole life, but I feel like I know you, which you probably get that a lot. Creepy, sorry. No, no. But when I wanted to put this event together for Women's Month, and I thought about what would be like the most incredible moment for these women, I called a personal friend and mentor, Devania Armstrong. You did? Be money. I actually met Devania through Stitches, um, through Stitches honoring other women in the community. So, you know, you guys already know what she does. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about what Devania does and Devania's company, Armstrong Creative Consulting, which provides. <laughs> she is awesome. <laughs> Creative uh, marketing, public relations, and community outreach services to corporate, non-for-profit, political, and governmental organizations. She is has a long-standing and well-respected track record um, in this county doing incredible um, public awareness campaigns, and it's become one of the fastest-growing minority-owned and operated businesses in South Florida. Yeah. So when I wanted to put this together, I called Savannah and I said, the proclamations are not enough. That's crazy. I need more. Aww. And there are more women that I need to honor within the space, within the visual arts of hip hop, because that's really what we do within this space is we're honoring visual artists within hip hop. And so Savannah and I devised a plan and maybe it's gonna come up and really talk through what that plan was and why Devania and Armstrong Creative Consulting made that happen. Um, so she is really responsible for what's about to be oh done. Devania? <laughs> Do you know? No. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to say welcome and thank you all for coming. But I am truly amongst friends and Super Cindy and Stitches. And let me tell you something, Lucy. You're about to put your number in my phone right now <laughs> because we are going to do something together. So I'm honored to be allowed to sponsor this event. There are a lot of people that reach out to me to do different things. I was born and raised in Carroll City, so this is home for me. Cece! So I want to say thank you to Allison and Ket for allowing me because this is such an honor to be amongst friends celebrating Women's History Month. <laughs> to sponsor this was a no-brainer for me because hip-hop has been, it is, and it will continue to be a part of my life. I am on my road to 50. Aww. And when I was to call, I'm doing out-of-the-box things this year. Because Black October, don't cry. I will be 50, and so 
again, when Allison calls at maybe 7.30 in the morning or 11.30 at night to take her phone call, and it is because of Stitches. I met her at your event, and I fell in love with her and all of the things she was a part of in short order. So to her parents, I say thank you. Yeah. My parents are here. These women deserve this and so much more. Again, I said I've had the privilege, I work with Super Cindy on bringing vision screenings to underserved kids across Miami-Dade County. And uh, in Stitches, we worked on some literacy stuff together. So again, Lucy, I say think of what you have an affinity for, because we're about to get it going, girl. Listen, I got a squad of Mamacita Vegas who are ready to serve. Ready to serve. I, we are, I am here for it. We represent five of the top nonprofits or quasi-governmental entities. If you live in Miami-Dade County, you've heard of the Children's Trust. If you live in Miami-Dade County, you've heard of Jackson Memorial Hospital and Ryder Trauma Center. If you live in Miami-Dade County, you've heard of the Early Learning Coalition and the Miami-Dade County Homeless Trust. Those are just some of our nonprofit clients. And in the for-profit space, we get to work with Miami homegrown James Jones, three-time three -time NBA champion. Western Union, and the list of others. But I want to be here tonight. I want to continue to be a friend of the Museum of Graffiti and the Art of Hip Hop. So thank you. Tonight, there's so much in store for you. Um, I look forward to spending time with the ladies and all of you. Thank you. So now the bios have been read. Now that these young women, um, these young ladies have a proclamation. So I am going to just jump right in to the three artists that stand behind me. Starting with Lucy Lopez. Yeah. This honoree's portrait has been created by Dee Dee Rocks. Diana Dee Dee Contreras was born in Peru, yet has established herself as a prolific Miami-based artist, drawing inspiration from themes of love, beauty, and womanhood. Dee Dee combines her formal art education from FIU with a blend of traditional painting techniques and street art influences. Her style has captured the attention of many, including Rihanna yes. and Pitbull. Come yes, on. I'm a little. <laughs> you can unveil your portrait. What? Yes. Or oh my God, oh that'll make me cry. Oh. oh my God. Records, 
Jack Daniels, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Swisher Sweets, amongst many others. Nico has established a track record as a community leader and a youth empowerment enthusiast after creating a community program called the Kids Mural Project. She's guiding thousands of students across Florida in designing and painting murals. Nico. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm shaking. <laughs> it was an honor. Oh my God. This that was incredible. Was incredible. Thank you. Die. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm about to oh rip these God. ashes off and just let myself. You, I'm going to fight you. I love you. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. Last. Oh my God. But certainly not least, our honoree, Super Cindy. Her portrait is being done by Miss Tierra Armstrong. She might be my cousin. <laughs> Tierra is an artist whose work encourages introspection about our connections to the world. Her early years spent in various cultures worldwide laid the foundation for her diverse artistic journey. Her art has graced a wide number of locations for her, including her first mural in Mexico City to a recent exhibition in Christie's in London. Tierra's works act as a beacon for a community shared of shared stories, representing a search for a place to call home in an ever-changing world. Tierra, present your piece. Oh, oh God. <laughs> How you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to you guys. And Stitches, your song <laughs> broke me because I really miss my mom. I'm and sorry. just thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, sorry. <laughs> OK, let me get it together. <laughs> um, my journey into radio. Um, ugh. I went to Miami Dade College. I wanted to be a dietitian. But when I saw the curriculum of science and math, I ran to radio and television. <laughs> and I ended up there. Lucy, we went to school together, right, at Miami-Dade? Oh, wow. Miami-Dade North. Miami-Dade North, stop playing with us. Oh, and um, We're a different breed. <laughs> OK, nothing like it. And we ba I basically, after I graduated, I really wanted to be a camera person for Channel 7 News. That was my goal in life. I want to be a camera person for Channel 7 News. Nobody hired me, and so then eventually I ended up as an intern on 99 Jams, interned there for free for two years, and just knew that's what I wanted to do. My college job was at Florida Power and & Light, 
And when I started hanging out at 99 Jams, I got fired from Florida Power and Light because I didn't care about Florida Power and Light. Um, and I just knew that's where I was meant to be. And I was working for Albie Silk. He left to go do mornings in Orlando and I was an intern. So I was like, nobody's gonna hire me. So I went to speak to Jerry Rush and the legend. And I said, I know you don't know me because I was doing nights. So the office is closed, they don't know me. And so when I spoke to Mr. Rush and he goes, we're bringing in this new guy. Just give me, a, you know, get, hold tight. I was fired, I was at home, my mom was screaming at me, go get a job, go work at Publix, the bank, I don't care where you work, just go work. And then I basically, they called me back. There was a small little room at the old 99 Jams building. They opened the door, this is your new co-host, go in there, they closed me in big lip, banded in a closet. Wow. And the rest is really history, like we really, in my opinion, changed the game in South Florida as far as radio goes. That period, I, I believe that to my soul. Yeah. My journey in radio has been a lot of ups and downs, being overlooked over and over and over and over. Did I say over? And over again. And over. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, I know it's cliche when you say, but it, it's not meant to, that wasn't meant to be. Just keep it. I was over it, but I really had to sit down and reflect and stop complaining and talking to myself and why well, I'm not good enough and just really realize that it really was not meant to be for me and there was something else for me. So I just really worked hard to get better, to get more relevant, to stay on top of things and through that whole journey, just be kind and connect with my listeners and my community. And my community is number one. Yeah, I get to go to award shows, I meet rappers, I meet celebrities. My number one favorite thing about being in radio is meeting the people that listen to me, getting stopped at Publix and a, and a listener looking in my car to see what I eat. I'm like, hey girl. <laughs> but I, that's my favorite thing about my job is basically meeting so many different people and like different nationalities. Oh my God, aren't you super skinny? I'm like, how do they know me? I'm like, you know? But I just love the people aspect of my radio journey. And I'm still on that journey. Yeah. And I am kind of ready to retire radio. I'm kind of over it. You still it, got but time. You still got time. You got yeah, time, baby. But I love my radio. Talk to, Lynn, uh, to Lucy. <laughs> She'll tell you all about retirement life. Um, but yeah, wow, you just threw it back to Albie Silk. And like, I remember, <laughs> what's up, y'all? So what's good to me? You can keep the run going. Home, y'all. What unique challenges or opportunities have you encountered like in the industry as a woman? Mm. So she yes. has oh, a she has yes. check. Oh, okay. Sorry. Check, check. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for this. I I yeah, thank you. And I'm usually never a loss for words, but man. Gotcha. Cause we love what we do. Like, we sincerely love what we do. Yeah. And for those who know, I, I think I can speak for all of us, we don't do it for this. We do it because we can. And every time, I'm being so sincere, every time, man, I was trying not to get me left. <laughs> we all cry, too. Man, cry. Every time we crack open, for me, when I crack open the mic, I pray. Because I'm aware that I don't know what people are going through. We don't know if somebody's on the brink of on, being on the edge. And we, I end up getting calls, and I'm sure all of you ladies do too, where people are in jail saying that they're tuned in. So them hearing love you for free or hearing something uplifting shifts their whole day. That's it for me. I'm blessed for that. So I just hope people know that we don't take this just as a job. Like, this is an honor. Like, it's an honor. So thank you for this. Child, what was the question? <laughs> I don't even know what the question <laughs> As it was, as Women's History Month, you know, I would like to know if you would share with the audience, um, as a female radio host, what unique challenges have you encountered in the industry as a woman? For sure. For me, um, I want to touch on this because I think it's important. I, it wasn't so much as being a female, I think it was my age, because coming, well, I guess you can say female and, and age. Just coming in, 
I was what you would consider green um, just because the time spent that people weren't aware of. Because a lot of people, they may not, they see your shine, but they don't see the dirt. I believe God gives us the grace where he won't let everybody see the dirt that gets on you in your journey and in your process. And for me, everybody didn't see the dirt. They didn't see me four o'clock in the morning working on my air checks, working with every station, working with every radio personality, trying to get better. And in the streets prior to me being on the air and just working the gifts that I was given. So for me coming in, I think, when I was blessed with the opportunity to do middays, it was kind of like, hi, <laughs> how she got it? It wasn't so much outspoken, and a lot of people don't know that I know that it was said, but you'd be surprised, people will come around and tell you what things that were said. Yeah. But it, it was for me just kind of just seeing and hearing people um, just look inside at like, how was she able to kind of bypass everyone else? But favor, come on, favor ain't fair. But that I always love to share that because while there's some people who will question, there will always be other people who are rooting you on. And even if you're in a position where nobody is rooting for you, what is for you is for you. And I believe everything that you're positioned to do, it's going to be a domino effect. So what, looking back, everyone that I was ending up training with and working with five o'clock in the morning, they ended up speaking up for me. And it was someone, and I always love to share this story, it was someone out of the building who heard me and saw me talk about kindness. One day I was just, and it's a long, but I'm, I'm wrapping it up. But it, I think it's important, just the basics of things of being kind to people. I was walking down the hall in our, in our studio and I'm blessed to work with the people that I do because everyone is just amazing and I'm learning from them. But true story, y'all, I'm walking down the hall and I see this gentleman that I've never seen before and I know God told me like, go say hi. So I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's your name? And he told me his name, I said, okay. And he said, yeah, I, I kind of heard about you, I, let's meet. So I said, okay, but all right. So he said, let's, so I'm chasing this man down. Okay, let's meet, he wanna be. I don't know who he is, we finna be. So I sit down preparation. When preparation meets opportunity, be prepared because the opportunity will come, but will you be prepared? I'm an artist, I came with my music, I came with my air check. Sat down, he heard the music, he said, why do you wanna do radio, you need to be doing music. I said, great, thanks, love it, listen to the air check. He listened to the air check, he said, I need you on the radio. Somebody asked me who that person was. Who was that person, Stitches? the senior vice president for iHeart Urban Radio. And it was it from there. I share that because it doesn't matter who may not be for you, it may be one, that two, you, it don't even matter. But when something is for you, it That's is right. for you. So that kindness, being prepared, and just being present is gonna come. It is going to come. So I hope I answered that question. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Lizzie, Lizzie did her time. She's recently gotten out of out of custody. She did 20 some years at Power 96. 25. 25 years at Power 96. And and I really think that what you get to do now is really call your own shots. And I would love for you to tell everybody. Um, what approach you take when deciding what content you're gonna do and, and how empowered or and, and how you felt getting to really do your own programming and, and how you make those decisions in ways because it's called the Mama Cita Rica podcast. So obviously there's a lot of feminine energy in there and so if you could share you know why you made that choice to do that podcast and how you choose your programming, that would be amazing. Okay. Well, thank you, first of all. I, I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and I, before I start, anything that I do, whether it's creating something for a client on behalf of an, of an, a behalf of an ad agency or, or a podcast or an episode or you know, hosting some party at Eating House in Coral Gables on 305 Day, I lead everything with God. Um, so if... Obviously, God's, God is the only reason why I'm sitting here, and I'm surrounded by these amazing women and men and people who uplift our community. So, uh, praise Him, and I just quickly want to shout out my kids who are, are in the audience. 
is a side of mommy you've never seen. Let's not repeat any of the movie words we might hear here tonight, okay? All right, cool. Um, movie words are bad words. Um, you know, like the women sitting on this panel today, uh, things don't necessarily change when it comes to what is driving you. And what drives me is my community. Um, women, uplifting women, and being able to share whatever spotlight Miami has decided to shine on me, I'm gonna shine it right back on them. It is incredibly important for me to create a safe space for Miami local creatives. It is my platform. I, I believe intelligence includes, and if we don't help each other as creatives, we're gonna get knocked out. Um, people ask me, what college did you go to? What university did you go to? And I think Cindy and Stitches may agree. I went to uh, La Universidad de the Streets of Miami Dade County. <laughs> the streets of Miami that count it. And uh, the mascot range from Pitbull to Rick Ross to Khaled to Cindy to Albie to, I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, it's, we come from a very particular school of hard knocks. I fought to get to where I am. I had to defend my Hialeah accent. I had to defend my Latinidad. And for some reason, the industry I, I am in or was in was terrified of my vagina. <laughs> I, which, it's beautiful. Um, thank you, honey. Because, as we all know, it's the most powerful organ in all of the land. <laughs> women, uplifting women, women shining each other's light on each other, and understanding the power that we have as creatives in this city is vital to keep the machine going. We must uplift each other, we must embrace each other, and to me it's important to share with you right now that this skirt is by, uh, her name is Jenny K. Lopez, and she's a Miami influencer, and now she has a line at Target. This is a Target skirt. Wow. Those things matter to me, okay? These bracelets, I bought them at tawdry.com. Female-led uh, uh, jewelry. Like, it's, it's the little things that have empowered me throughout my entire career that I had to shut up about, right? And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm telling everybody, these are all the secrets. Come sit down with mama, let me tell you what happened. Um, when it comes to programming, when it comes to episodes, when it comes to the content that I create, intent, connection, and human experience. The human experience is never out of style. The human experience surrounds us all. Look at these walls. People having a good time, people embracing the culture, people loving each other, sharing their music, sharing their art. The human experience will never go out of style. And I feel the same way about local radio. Although I'm no longer part of that family, nine to five, 3 a.m. in the morning, do I miss it? Yes, but it's the little things. Publix, right? There's a Dunkin' Donuts off 103rd and 95th, and 95. And that Dunkin' Donuts, the girl that works there at 4 a.m., her name is Dee Dee. And I would pull up at the Dunkin' Donuts at about 3.50 in the morning, and she would see my car. And I'd be like, here we go. <laughs> it is sketchy. That name, it's scary. It's scary, I'm by myself in my car. My dad would kill me if he saw me. And I get up, she's like, Lucy Lopez! You want a two and two hot? I'm like, two and two hot, medium, got you. I miss that. I miss that shout out from my community. I miss my city. Yes. I miss being the voice sometimes in, in uh, times of need. When there's a hurricane, it sounds ridiculous, but it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, not at all. I miss not, not like the hurricane. Of, there's stupid traffic on 95. I want to gripe with it, gripe about it with you. 
Those are the moments I miss. Have I substituted those moments with parenting knowledge and expertise and speaking to other women in our, in our sphere? I have. I still have people reach out to me during COVID, after COVID, my, uh, I can't pay my rent, I need money for food, I got two kids, I'm a single mom, and I know who to put these, thank God I know who to put them in, who to put them in contact with, right? My new journey, it's interesting because I never got to say goodbye to Miami properly, because radio does that to you. And I wanted to say a proper goodbye and a, and a proper thank you. So, you deserve that. Thank you. you that. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. I love you. Can I say thank you for your transparency? Thank you for your honesty in that because you don't hear this side from this side. So thank you for your transparency and your honesty. You guys are killing me. <laughs> So actually, that's how I got to meet Lucy, is um, I was a, I don't want to call myself a victim, but I was part of Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. And I came to Miami, which is home for me, and I listened to the radio and heard Lucy on the radio um, collecting donations uh, to go to New Orleans. And I happened to have had cases and cases of water in my car that I had bought in New Orleans for my house in New Orleans and I drove my car home to escape from Hurricane Katrina. And when I heard Lucy on the air on the way home uh, from New Orleans escaping Hurricane Katrina while I was living there, I pulled over to where her site was and I donated those cases of water and that's how I got to know Lucy in college and that's when she invited me to intern and gave me an opportunity um, didn't know me from Adam. I, you know, I, I Laz had this huge squad of people that followed him around. Lucy literally had no one. I was like, are you sure it's okay that I come with you? And she's like, come here, child. <laughs> After I lost everything at school and lost my semester at school and, and lost my house and everything that was going on in New Orleans, Lucy took me in and gave me an internship. I was, I had to start new school and, and do all that stuff. And, and I, this is absolutely not about me, but just to show you the impact of radio and how you actually got to impact a, a human being's life. Like Lucy impacted my life, and and this is, look at where we are, <laughs> it's full circle. Um, and so I can understand that completely, and, and today has been a really emotional journey that like Lucy got to do that for me, and it's really, my turn to do something for you. So um, I want to bring it back to Cindy. I know we're like running way over. We got started late. So we're, we're going to wrap it up really soon. But Cindy, if you could share with everybody how you incorporate local culture and community interest into your radio show. Oh, wow. <laughs> Every day it's about the 305. Every day. Every single day. And then I say nine five four five six one. We love you too, but three oh five. Um there so much happens in the three oh five. And how could you not talk about it? Um I have the Pat Jam morning show alongside DJ Nasty, three oh five. And he's like a representer in the community of the three oh five. I have 305 in my blood, even though I moved away to Astoria, Queens, because my parents got divorced. But as soon as I barely graduated high school, my mom was like, Ven paca. <laughs> get your ass back to Miami. <laughs> and, um, and, I'm, and at that time, I was pissed about it, but I'm so grateful I came back to Miami. So every day, getting content for the morning show, what we're going to talk about, breaks on the whim, like just come up and we laugh about a memory or something. If you're from the 305, it just comes naturally. Like, it's not even planned. Like, there's so much to talk about the 305, from the food, to the people, to the crazy people on 95, to, it could go on and on. So, content in, on my radio show, definitely back in the day was more free. It's more controlled now, but there's no way not to include the 305. And I include it without even trying every single day.
That's my answer. Thank you. Man, I didn't prepare. Uh, Allison, I'm so sorry. There are a lot of uh, memorable moments. Um, man, the one that's just popping up in my head now, um, I don't know why, but we did a, it was a give back that we did, I think two years, two years ago, I think, or a year ago with um, Kodak. And it was in Pompano. And when we were there, because I grew up in, in Broward, and, but we do, you know, Broward, Dade, Palm Beach, like you said, tri County, mm -hmm. five, six, nine, five, four, we show love there, 305, everybody. Mm -hmm. But um, there were a particular group of men that came up to me. And, ah, oh, man, don't label me a crybaby, y'all. I don't cry like this, I promise. I really don't. I don't be crying like this. I don't. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. But um, when we were giving away food, these young men came up to me and they just said, love you for free. Uh, and I'm like, what? They said, Stitches, man, we was inside that Stitch. And man, when we hear you say love you for free, I don't know that thing do something for me, Stitches, that thing do something for me. And that, it, it just did something for me. I don't know why, but just hearing that, because if you can understand, we're, we're in a room. For me, I'm midday, so I don't, have, but I don't have nobody in the room with me. So I make my people, and I picture, I think for me, performance, radio is an extension of performance. I just can't see you. So for me, when I perform, I'm looking for the person who's looking sad. Like, don't come to me if you're looking sad, because I'm coming for you. And my goal is to make you happy or excited or make you feel like you want to be here, something. So when I hear things like that, it just, small things like that bring me joy and it makes me know that it's worth it, even from giving away tickets and hearing how people um, just react to it. And I can hear a tone if they're having a bad day. I say, what happened, like off, offline. I'll say, what happened to you? What's going on? Well, so, and they'll tell me their whole life story. But just to be able to give a ticket or give some money and that shifts somebody's whole day for me that is that's memorable you would think it's the artist but it's not it's i think it's just the genuine people Today and the effect I spent time on your show oh, yeah, 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 yeah. away a thousand dollars and she's like well, she's like watch this we're about to give somebody a thousand dollars i was like what she's like tell her tell her what you want and i was like i can't do that you do it i can't tell you want a thousand dollars um and so yes that's amazing um lucy yeah. one thing i think with you know, we are in the art of hip hop right now. Sure. And so one thing with the Mama Cita Rica podcast, I'm wondering how you feel about, you know, not being as connected to the music more, right. in, you know, and, and how do you kind of fill that cup for yourself? Because obviously you love music. I know that you do. And, sure. and how do you, you know, kind of keep up and, and, and fill that part of your soul? This is going to blow your mind, but I have a 13 year old. And Amelia Sunshine. Amelia, get up and show everybody your jacket, first of all. Show, show how proud you are of your city. Um, and show, show Cindy East Ditches. Oh, okay. 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 Mama. Okay. <laughs> Video words, mama. My mom doesn't know she's wearing that. Um, you know, I, for me, it's... Um, it's a great question, I get it. Uh, I'm not breaking records or helping an artist break a record nowadays, but I have kind of substituted it with something else. I've looked for the next creative, the next thing, because I feel that, right, you know, you have to evolve. One of the coolest things that a program director, Angel Storm, once said to me, was my favorite, my favorite thing about you is you continue to evolve day to day as a talent on this radio station. I, and I hold on to that because I don't think evolving, it, for me, it's okay, well, what's my platform now? Well, I'm on Instagram, I got this podcast, I'm on Slate Magazine, this is, that's a big deal. It's a parenting podcast, it's called Karen Feeding. I'm surrounded by strong parents who are trying to raise these Gen Alpha kids without losing their ish. 
So I think what I'm now really focusing on is finding the next creative in Miami. That is my favorite thing to do right now. So if I can shine my spotlight on Dee Dee Rock, if I can shine my spotlight again on someone like Lynette Storybook who's on Instagram or Martha of Miami who owns like the hottest Miami gear, very Cuban centric, um, that is important to me. Like I just shifted my, my spotlight. Like I'm like, okay, well I'm not on the radio. I'm not gonna be able to break a record. And to be honest, that's pretty hard in 2024 to break a record on the radio. We got TikTok. This kid sings to me songs. I'm like, what, are you, what is that? What, what are you singing? It's so and so, you don't even know it, mom. You don't even know it. I'm like, you're right, I don't know it, but do you know this creative? Do you know this artist? Do you know? So I'm just like shifting it. I'm just showing the spotlight on a different wave. Like partnering up right now with Gable Stage, our whole mission right now is to bring the community back to the theater because everyone, I mean to offend, it's like, well, if you're not white and you're not rich, you can't come to the theater. And I'm trying to change that shit. Because when I was on the radio, believe it or not, I was told that accent's not gonna get you everywhere and you're not gonna be able to land the national spot. I walked away with 10 national spots under my arm. So I feel the answer to your question is more like, yeah, I can't do this, but I can do this. And in my opinion, my humble Ellis opinion, hip hop is culture. Hip hop is painting, hip hop is fashion, jewelry, uh, food, drink, all of it. And so I'm still in it. It's just, as, as another program director, Jill Strata once said to me, girl, you're irreverent. And I, I was like, what you say? She's like, you're irreverent. You gotta lean into that. So my creativity is irreverent. Yes, we helped Chico come up. Yes, we helped Rick Ross, Grind Mode, Pretty Ricky. Those are my records, Trina. Those are my records, those are her records. It is, Cindy, it is what it is. And those are things that now I'm more interested in finding the next leading actress, the next leading creator, content creator, all of that. That's what I wanna do. That, those are the people I want to shake hands with and talk with and you know break bread with and invite to my table. I want to say that you were here for me and you know you know you noticed the first museum of graffiti and that was real during COVID when we had the A Whole Sips Flu show. Um, so for those of you who are just coming into the art of hip hop for the first time, the museum, the entire museum of graffiti started in this space. It was not here for a very long time. We, we quickly grew out of it, but it was only thanks to our community partners like Lucy, who would show up in the middle of COVID with a mask, take content, help out, you know, was so supportive. Of because we have to help each other. If we don't help each other in this creative lane, we're not going to survive. It's simple, real simple. We got Manny Fuentes in the back, who's currently um, managing King Tetris. When King Tetris from the 305, I'm sure y'all are familiar with him. When he broke, what, second behind Drake? Wow. The day is out, like, I know that, I highlight it, I'm not on the radio, I'm not playing the record, but I got like 85K right now on a, in combined social media numbers. That's how I'm gonna help my city grow. Because King Tetris being behind Drake as he debuted his, his album, it's not just a win for him, it's a win for everybody in this room, y'all. All of us win. When I eat, you're gonna eat as well. Thank you. And, and, and that's really how we built these spaces. We built the Museum of Graffiti, and we're just, just now starting the art of hip hop. You guys are here at the inception of this concept. This is brand new. You guys are the innovators who are here. You guys are breaking art of hip hop right now. This space is only three months old and would not be here unless you guys show up and if you help and you guys participate and come for the culture and support the people that we're trying to educate on, we're archiving, we are doing all that work and you guys are here, you're day oneers. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I only have one more question for the three of them and we can open it up to questions um, and we'll just go down the line. Cindy, um, the question for everybody is, um, 
what is next in terms of upcoming projects or anything that you want to plug? Oh, sorry. I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. Um, up next. This question is like so hard to answer sometimes because like, what do you tell, what do you not tell before it launches right, right, and right. things like that? <laughs> and then you're like, I have a lot in the works and everybody's looking at you like, really? show and prove. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I really do. I have two television ideas that I'm in talks now to take to the next step. I kind of like no longer want to be in the front anymore because I've always been in the front and I'm really ready to step behind the scenes because that's how I started in college. I just ended up in front of the camera and in front of the, the microphone, God's will. But I really want to start working behind the scenes and curating different things as far as TV production and TV shows. That's always been my passion. And I also have a beauty, I don't want to say beauty line because I'm like, oh God, here she comes with another lip gloss. No, no. <laughs> no it's We're not like forward. cosmetics. It's another, I mean, uh, it's another product that will help you reset this madness of the world that we deal with on a daily basis quickly. And it doesn't take you to go to a spa for 10 hours and soak in a tub for 80 years. I got you. You're going to be resetting on the run because of me. And I, you'll be, just follow my movements at S-U-P-A Cindy. <laughs> And it's an idea that I came up with and I have not stopped putting it together. I want to show mad love to Jill Strada, my mentor, my sister. I want to show mad love to my girl, Nicole, who I work with, Nikki Montana. And I want to show mad love, I don't know where she went. Oh, there she is, my project manager and my sister in life, Erica. Who hears me whine, cry at three in the morning and everything. I love you, Erica. And just my sisterhood of people that I love so much, I appreciate you guys. I just want to shout out that Erica's double Louis Vuittoning right now. <laughs> That's what we and do around here. here. Not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of things going on. Follow my movements, S-U-P-A Cindy on all platforms. And I just really love my community, my listeners. I love Lucy so much. Stitches, I've known you since you were like a young girl, right? What you trying to say? No, <laughs> like, no, 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 like for real. Hold like, it, Hold no, it, like when you were like a teenager or whatever, yeah. used to hit me in Big yeah. Rip Up. Yeah. I, I remember. remember, you used to always talk to me. Yeah. So yeah. it's like us up here together. Oh, let everybody talk their ideas. I'm sorry, I'm well, rambling. No, no, go ahead. I love you. Tell me, just tell me what's up next. Plug, plug, tell us what, what's going on. And I, I do have to, I know, sorry, I'm that person, but salute to all of these ladies because Truly, like Cindy said, even growing up and, and just representing for um, the Hispanic culture and representing even at that time, there, were no, there really wasn't anybody representing for our Haitian community. Yeah. And you really were. So I, I, sometimes I feel like that doesn't get noticed. So from me to you, sis, from me to you, sis, I personally salute you within this field and this sphere. <laughs> I'm standing beside, like, sincerely some giants. So I'm honored to even be here. So thank you for all that you ladies have done and continue to do even in the platform that you have. Because we still here and we still rooting for you, sis. So ain't nobody going nowhere. That you part. Still here and we, you still got your city behind you. That part. Um, but for me, it's um, just multifold. I, I always say this, wherever God want me to go, that's where I'm gonna do my best to go. Um, but for you students and children, I, I, for some reason are in my heart and will never go away. Um, but we are working on some more children's books. You have Bell Readers, literacy, um, just helping our kids, not just to read, but to also um, just look into the things and tap into the gifts that God has given them. And in reverse, I'm hoping that it does translate with our adults as well. So Chia Bell collection in French, it means you are beautiful. So I believe at a young age, if we don't capture our youth, with understanding who they are, they're not gonna be able to even love or, or see any love within other people if they can't even see it within themselves. So that's the groundwork for, for that. And also cultivating the gifts that they've been given. We host something called um, Express Yourself Teen Open Mic, just an open platform, God's grace for them to express themselves, but we bring in, I gotta bring y'all in, so 
bring in um, professionals just to pour back into them and we also fund for them to know that you can get paid for the art that you, that you do. Um, aside from that, music is just something that will never leave me and because um, with, I'm sure by now everybody sees what's happening in Haiti and it's just something burning in my spirit that won't go away and just creating a project um, that will uplift the people and just uplift the mindset far from poverty, but I think it's in the mind and the heart and the spirit. So I'm praying that through the music, I'll be able to do that and just galvanize as many people um, as possible to help create a change within the lane that I do have that's musically. And then um, just other programs and projects that we have, um, bringing the community together, the platform that we have, um, I believe it's, it's never just for us, it's to really help other people. And I always said, I do not want to leave without bringing in the person or the people that I was supposed to. I don't want to be pulled off or say that I'm leaving and there was somebody that was supposed to have touched the mic. That I was, that I was responsible for bringing in or that either of us were responsible. Because certain times, even you, whatever position that you have, there's certain people that you're called to. And there's certain people that you are, without knowing, are responsible. They're looking at you like once you get your breakthrough, their breakthrough is coming. But you gotta get through yours. And there's people waiting and watching for you to get to that place. Yeah. Whether whatever, what, whatever job you're doing, whatever career you're going into, somebody's watching you. So for me, it's to just do everything that I'm supposed to be doing so the people beside me, the people behind me, see it and they break through too. It's just not for me. Let's do something here for um, oh, Haitian, Haitian, okay, Haitian, okay. Haitian, I was gonna say, uh, Haitian Heritage Month is May, I think. Yes, sir. Um, and so let's, let's do something. And so, you know, let's make this a community platform to raise awareness for the, for the issues that are plaguing this world and helping promote uh, the importance of helping others and lending a hand, and, and so see you guys here in May. It's, in, it's on camera now. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's okay. And thank you to my aunt, my and my best friend for here. Hi, boys. Our station couldn't make it, but thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Um, so, I, what's next for me is to continue to be uh, the strong mother that I am to my daughters. That's number one. Um, to be a good daughter, to be a great sister, cousin. That's like, my family is everything to me. Um, and then in terms of work-wise, I'm just right now in it with uh, Karen Feeding Podcast on Slate.com. It's really great, uh, the work that we're doing, just you know, giving advice to parents who need it. Being a parent in 2024 really sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, and it's not the kids, it's, it's what's around us and how we need to navigate it and be real with them because a lot of information that's out there for these kids right now, it's, uh, I'd say it, it goes through a TikTok filter. Um, you know, my kid the other day was like, I just, I just, how do you know Pitbull? I'm like, huh, what? She's like, I saw a TikTok. I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, come over here. I'm gonna tell you a story, have a seat. Um, so from Slate Podcasting to the Mamacita Rica Podcast, um, and then I'm really interested, so I'm gonna just throw it out into the universe. Some of the biggest um, requests I get on my DM is for help for food. Um, I do a lot of uh, spotlighting on my IG, on my newsletter, and on my website for Miami Fridge Community, which are all these refrigerators that are out through the city. I'm sure some of the artists here have painted a few. Um, that is near and dear to my heart. This is a refrigerator where if you see it in your neighborhood, you open it up, fill it up, and if whatever you need, you can take, no questions asked. But I think more so than that, the amount of mothers that have reached out to me asking me for help. So I'm just putting it out into the universe. I really want to do something with mothers and grocery shopping. Sounds not as glamorous as some other stuff, but it is incredibly needed. Y'all, six dollars for a gallon of milk at Sedano Zubimeki? That's no joke. That is no joke. And those are things that I really want to do in the future. And I'm working with Gable Stage and I'm working with New City Players and other theater. Um, I think 
One of the biggest lessons I learned in at Power 96 was uh, how important it is, you know, to share what you've got and your knowledge with up and coming artists, right? I'm in a different scope and meeting up and coming actors and content creators and writers and directors and producers who don't have the space to create in and who just want a shot. I'm one of those people who's like, come here, come play with us, come here and do this for us. I just finished shooting a whole thing called Theater Baby, which is a character that I specifically created to promote Gable Stage and New City Players through an up and coming actress here in Miami called Marcella and the character's Theater Baby and I wrote and I directed all of it and it's like blowing up on the internets right now. Thank you. Those are things you can look for. Just the way that I use my irreverence uh, and leaned into it has really worked out for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm on. That's, that's my next chapter. Uh, just creating with the up and comers. Being the sage old lady in the corner in my day. Freak Nick was a destiny. <laughs> was a destination for us all. Have a seat. I wanted to say something really quick. Like when you talked about the grocery store, I tweeted a few days ago, going to the grocery store now, I feel like I'm shopping for my groceries at the airport. Yes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but I also wanted to say, us three being on hip, I mean, in hip hop, us three being on radio stations, all three different companies, all three different radio stations, they always told us we couldn't be friends. Did you, you remember I that? can't cross promote yeah. Stitch's song. Yeah. It was just, it's terrible. But I just want to tell the, the two of you, I have always supported you, even if I couldn't tweet, repost or something. And I love the both of you all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. Oh, I don't want to. And that is actually something, you know, it, it, that's really interesting because we do hear for, I, I don't know if this is the first time ever that we had 99 Jams, 103.5 The Beat, and um, one oh, and Power 96 all together. I mean, I worked my ass off to make sure that this could happen. And you know, I'm, I'm you know was dealing with 1035 and talking to, to uh, my dear friend who runs media there and and navigating some of that um, and and trying to understand these parameters. And I'm like. I understand business is business, but we can all be friends. And with that being said, I did want to make one quick shout out to Bar Taco. Um, that is Sabrina, and um, we could not be more grateful. They are across the street from us. Uh, my partner and I eat there every single day. If you need to roll up on one of us and you're, you can't get into our office and you're trying to get our attention for something, we've actually had people roll up on us in Bar Taco. And, and they're like, we're, we're just going to sit here and wait for Allison and Ket because like, we have an idea. We want to talk to them. We know they'll show up here eventually. And so thank you so much, Bar Taco, for supporting these women. margaritas or like something awesome um, and so we would like we're way over time and so in the last five minutes if anybody has any questions um, that they're dying to ask please raise your hand and if not we can just adjourn and, and kind of get some more margaritas for bar taco um, if, if, if we get a sponsor asking for a friend can we bring this reason back here to a private event for some of that Yes, I'm speaking for them. If you get a sponsor <laughs> and we can pay them, they'll be here. Uh, you can. I'm their new manager. <laughs> I just, I, I just uh, yes, of course we can. Uh, you know, Haitian heritage yeah, month I think is great, um, and I think we're we have a, a lot we can all do together and band together as women to share opportunities. And um, you know, so uh, by a show of hands, really quickly, who who is there? It's their your first time inside the space. Oh wow! Oh my God! So so welcome from the bottom of my heart. This is the first of many of these incredible uh, panel discussions you're going to get to see here. Um, that's why we built this space is to provide this platform to hear these stories and to network and to share 
and to build community and, and honestly recording this. Like I can't count how many cameras are around us because we are here documenting history. We are here documenting local Miami history so that nobody, so once Super City retires and does her thing on TV, no one's gonna forget who held it down for all those years on the Miami campus. No one's gonna forget who was uh, working midnights and going to the, the Dunkin' Donuts. No one's gonna forget all of this. And so um, please give us a follow. But, um, you know, this is my shameless beg to you so that we can keep this place alive. Uh, please tell a friend. And um, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your Friday night. And I'd like to say a big shout out to Bar Taco because this is the first margarita I've ever had in my life. I'm that green. And I also want to show love to my brother, Derek G. Repping 305, all, no, I'm not saying you. I'm saying Derek G. No, but he was here earlier. I just want to show love to my brother, Derek G, who definitely is 305 in his blood and his veins and his poop in the toilet everywhere. Everything. So. I was just thinking about Derek really quick. Derek is my favorite. He's the brother that I didn't know I was supposed to have. Um, he, I spoil him and he is a brat and I love him so much. That's it. Yeah. No. Check out Derek G's wall. It's yes. here, all of his work. Um, I mean, I think he would have died if he was here and heard all these beautiful women talking about him. So have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Really, really quick, I'm so sorry. Oh, Just, no. I know, and, I'm, and then we're gonna go. I know, I'm like that auntie that don't put the phone down. The auntie that don't put the phone down. But it's just in my heart, and really thank you, ladies, for putting this together and us yes. debunking the thought that we can't collectively come together and do something great. Um, but I don't know who this is for, but through the journey and through the process, no matter what profession or whatever you've been called to do, just hang on. Your time will come, just hang on. Just keep going, just keep pressing. Keep being in the spaces that you're supposed to be in. Keep being in the circles that really are conducive to where you're trying to go. Sometimes you have to separate with the people that you think that are closest to you but are not productive to the purpose. Yeah, sometimes the people close, this for somebody, sometimes the people closest to you are not productive to the purpose. Doesn't mean you have to completely say bye, I don't like you no more. You have to be selective to who you're placing around. Selective keyword. You can choose, you can choose who you're allowing to listen to you you can choose who you are allowing to feed into you and who you're feeding into. This woman, I don't even think you understand the giant that you are. Yes, you're out of radio. You're out of terrestrial radio. This is for you now. You're out of terrestrial mainstream radio, if you will. But the platform that God has given you, you're reaching people to a magnitude and to a place that you wouldn't have been able to in that other space. There are people now that are touching you and that you're, be, you're being able to reach at a different level, sis. Mm -hmm. So, and I understand sometimes that void, but it's going to be filled because there's another generation that's watching Lucy Lopez and how she's been able to maneuver. Yeah, sis, and I know this auntie talking about. The stamp that you've made in radio Nobody on this planet can take that away from you. <laughs> the staple and the stamp. And you know, some people would, would sometimes confuse us and we wouldn't get mad because, oh, Cindy, no, that's the, y'all don't like it, no, we good. That's <laughs> us, we good. always want us to good. be our friends. <laughs> but I, I hope that stays in your spirit and in your heart, the stamp and the staple. Nobody can erase that. Nobody can move that, so wherever you go, you're going to carry that with you. That and part. we personally wish you the best, but you ain't going nowhere no time soon. <laughs> I don't think so. But whatever you do, I believe, and I pray that it turns to gold. And I say that out loud, that whatever you touch, may it turn to gold. Thank you, Mama. thank you, Allison, for what you do. We support you in everything that you do, sis. Anytime you call and pick up, she doing an event for us next week. Don't forget. Okay, just put that <laughs> up. Okay. Love y'all. God bless you. <laughs> and do.